bad. Remember the time I sang La Cucaracha for Paul McCartney? Yep, yep! We are not resorting to that. I remember when I first saw Family Guy on Adult Swim. It was back in 2003, and me and my friends absolutely loved it. We thought it was hilarious, and it quickly became the subject of many inside jokes. Hey, Lois. What? Diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, I'm holding nice tea. Family Guy itself has been an incredibly successful franchise and has brought in billions of dollars. From DVD sales to syndication, Family Guy is a cash cow, one that Fox refuses to give up. But after 18 seasons, it has become quite obvious that the show has gone downhill. Heck, even some of the people who work on the show agree. The current showrunner, Alex Sulkin, said that there's kind of a burnout factor Steve Callaghan was the showrunner before me, and I think he did a good job, but there is a clock on the show, and it can be difficult to get excited and stay focused. Focusing. So what has created this change for Family Guy? Is the staff of the show to blame? Or perhaps Family Guy has simply run out of ideas? And why does Fox continue to push the show, despite its noticeable decline in ratings? Hello? Look, I may have been a little rash. Our ratings have dropped 50%. Whatever suggestions you have, I'll listen. So we are going to take a closer look at what ruined Family Guy. Before we talk about what happened to Family Guy, we need to take a look at how the show got to where it is today. I'm here to tell you about a fantabulous new series concept I've developed. It's called The Life of Larry, and it centers around the madcap, maniacal misadventures and general mishaps of a lovable but tactless lower middle class moax by the name of Larry Cummings, with his ever-present supportive wife Lois, his slightly oversized son Milt, and his incisive cynical dog Steve. Let's look at a scene. And hey, keep an eye out for the outrageous Star Trek parody. Family Guy's origin can be traced to Seth MacFarlane's thesis film called The Life of Larry. It was created in 1995 and features characters and writing that would heavily inspire Family Guy. What do you think they eat? Oh, I guess, uh, I don't know, it's some kind of like space jerky or something, I guess. You know, yeah, cause, you know, because they're obviously, well, I mean, Shatner's obviously, you know, getting fed fairly well. I mean, somebody, somebody's seeing to that. Yeah, well, I, I think what happens is he uh, eats his food and then whatever Spock can't finish. Uh, he, he eats that too. Oh, uh, where, where did you where did you hear that? Episode 65. Uh. In 1997, Hanna Barbera asked Seth for a sequel and would feature it on their own series called What a Cartoon. The final product was Larry and Steve, a cleaned up and toned down version of the original. If you don't get me out of here, I will be put to sleep. Do you are you listening? Do you understand me? You will be indirectly responsible for the resulting euthanasia. Oh boy, they got enough kids or whatever it is. Larry and Steve would eventually become Family Guy and was pitched to Fox. Thanks to the success of shows like The Simpsons and King of the Hill, Family Guy was greenlit and premiered on January 31st, 1999, right after the Super Bowl. Star was born on Super Bowl Sunday. I say, am I to spend the entire day wallowing around with my own feces? A little service here. Meet Stewie on the series premiere of Family Guy, April 11th on Fox. Quadruped? Mutant. At first, the show performed quite well and had a decent time slot, but that would change when season two arrived. The time slot was moved and the ratings dropped drastically. Family Guy couldn't keep up and Fox canceled the show after season three. Even through syndication, it was difficult to turn a profit with Family Guy. That's when Adult Swim stepped in and started to show reruns in 2003. It became a smash hit and was one of their most popular programs. Hi there, I'm Peter Griffin. You might know me from a little show called Family guy. Or you might know me as Jack from Will and Grace, but I wear a lot of makeup for that and I really ham it up with the gay routine. Anyway, next Sunday, Adult Swim is airing an episode of Family Guy that Fox refused to show. But my good pals at Cartoon Network are showing it. Although I think they're making a couple of changes because I'm so controversial. <laughs> See the Family Guy episode you've never seen next Sunday at 11 p.m. on Adult Swim.
Like I said before, this is how I and many others discovered the show. Family Guy was also incredibly successful with its DVD sales and sold millions of copies. Because of the revival and financial success, Fox brought Family Guy back to their network in 2005. Thanks to Adult Swim, Family Guy was able to get its second wind. Seth MacFarlane also mentioned how they were lucky to get a break from the show and avoid any kind of creative fatigue, how they wanted to return right where they left off. But it's kind of funny. They were concerned about creative fatigue back in season 4, but now they're on season 18. Obviously, what they feared has come true, and the show today, despite its massive success over the years, has hit a wall. Embrace the fear! Dance with me, Lois! Dance the dance of life! I tried to rewatch Family Guy for this video and got as far as season 14. I also watched season 17 and 18 in order to see the current state of the show. So here are my thoughts. Seasons 1 to 5 were amazing. The jokes, the characters, the stories, I loved it. Seasons 6 and 7 were when I started to notice a decline, but nothing too severe. The show was still enjoyable and easy to watch. Season 8, though, was when I began to lose interest and saw changes in the show. How the characters started to become more polarized in their traits. Peter used to be a silly doofus, but now he's a malicious jerk. Hey, Joe, open your eye. <laughs> gotcha! What the hell, Peter? You shot him in the eye! Keep singing, you! And keep your chin up so I can see your throat! Lois was the kind housewife, but now she's a deviant sex addict. Local housewife and church organist Lois Griffin has revealed to this reporter that she appeared in a pornographic movie back in the early 1980s. What? Meg went from being the socially awkward daughter to becoming the walking, talking, punching bag for the family. I can already picture my funeral! Thanks, didn't want to pay for the whole. Brian used to be the voice of reason, but now he's a pretentious, selfish ass who only causes problems for himself and those who he's involved with. What are you doing on a leash? Who's that? Shh, be cool. This is the guy whose wife I'm banging. Oh, what a romantic way to put it. Yeah, it's great. I just pretend to be their dog, and then when he leaves for work, I get to go to the pound, if you know what I mean. God, Brian, you are such a scumbag. The only two characters who grew for the better were Stewie and Chris. Yeah, you know, actually, Stewie is kind of a weird exception. He went from being this maniacal, evil baby to actually having a personality that could interact with the rest of the characters. In that process, he also became more flamboyant, but I was okay with that. There was a sweet spot in season three and four where he was able to develop as a character, but over time, he became a sex addict like Lois. Now, for Chris, he went from from being a bumbling, stupid teenage boy to actually having somewhat of a character and a conscious, which is very so much needed when you have Peter and Lois and Brian. And I haven't even mentioned the other side characters. Quagmire is a rapist. Joe is seen as subhuman because he's handicapped. Bonnie hates her husband. And it only drives home how Family Guy has run out of ideas. They even admit to this. You see a lot more sex jokes and bodily function jokes and signs of a fatigue Staff that their brains are just fried. This is super obvious with the current state of affairs for the show and how they push things way too far. If you're just stringing her along, well then I gotta say, I've lost a lot of respect for you, Brian. So Family Guy went from being a cult phenomenon to being a massive hit and had high ratings throughout the years. But over time, we have seen quite the significant drop in viewership. Now, one could argue that this is because of the show, but to be fair, there's also been a shift in viewership from television to streaming services. I mean, I rewatch Family Guy on Hulu, and I don't know if those numbers are reflected statistically. But I suspect it's a combination of both a drop in quality for Family Guy and the rise of streaming services. My friend also made a point that incoming viewers, primarily kids, aren't connecting with the show the way kids did back in 2003. So that too could contribute to the drop in ratings. Kids! Kids! Ah! It's so awesome! I want it! Ultimately though, and I've been hinting at this throughout the entire video, but what I believe is ruining Family Guy is franchise fatigue. That they've run out of ideas and they don't know what to do with their characters. The same thing can be said about The Simpsons, SpongeBob, and The Fairly Odd Parents. When you have a show that's episodic, the format can grow quite stale, where characters go through trials and tribulations, but hit the reset button at the end. Peter has gone through stuff. 
talked about what lesson he has learned, and has gone right back to his old self in the following episode. Not many episodic shows have consistent character growth, and if they do, it's typically minor and on the side. I actually appreciate My Little Pony for this reason. One of the characters was a pushover, but later on has consistently learned to stand up for herself. The only change we see in Family Guy characters is the polarization of negative traits that only make the characters more undesirable, and more often than not, those changes aren't really inspired. Instead, they come from desperation, to keep a show afloat that has obviously gone past its prime. I'm sorry I've been so preoccupied with your age. Well, look, Peter, don't worry, let's just forget about it. Fantastic. And to help us forget about it, family, I'd like to introduce new Brian. Hey, gang, whose leg do you have to hump to get a hug around here? Another point my friend Jim made is how the show had more restrictions early on, but due to its success, it now has the ability to do whatever it wants. Sometimes, restrictions force a show to be creative. That's what happened with Ren and Stimpy. When it moved from Nickelodeon to Spike, it no longer had a filter, and the show lost its creative edge. You idiot! Ren and Stimpy's all-new adult party cartoon premieres Thursday at 10 p.m. on Spike TV. Now, there are shows like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star Trek, and My Little Pony that have a reset button where they can end one series, take a break, and then start fresh with another. Now, this doesn't always work out, but sometimes it does. Sadly, shows like SpongeBob, Simpsons, and Family Guy don't have that luxury. Instead, they just keep going and going and going until they can no longer make any money. That's the ultimate culprit here. If a TV network owns a show and it still makes money, then there's a very strong chance that the show in question will keep going. The Simpsons and Family Guy have made billions of dollars through syndication alone, and that's easy money for big TV networks. So as long as these shows make cash, we will most likely see them continue until the show itself crashes and burns. There's a wild card in all of this. If the government allows it, Fox will be purchased by Disney, and that could change the game. Now, I don't know what Disney's agenda is, you know, outside of acquiring everything on planet Earth, but this purchase has shaken things up. Many people left Fox after they found out the news about the purchase, and that might be the case for the people who make Family Guy. I could only imagine that Fox was very kind to Family Guy, but Disney might have a different approach. I mean, they might hold resentment for all the Mickey Mouse jokes. You killed him? That was not me. Someone else got to him first. Tough break, Jew Mouse! Ha ha! Money might prevail here, and Family Guy will continue with its slow death of franchise fatigue. But hey, Disney might bring the hammer down and completely overhaul Fox. Or not. They might just leave it the way it is. Outside of Disney, nobody knows. But the next few years will be interesting for television and streaming services. But overall, I'm sad to see Family Guy fall so far from grace. It was once a great show that me and my friends absolutely loved. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was a Simpsons clone, but we were okay with that. But now, it's just a dead husk of what it once was. Hopefully, it will be able to end on a high note, but only time will tell. What do you mean, it all right? It all right? It not subtle or nuanced. It tasteless and lukewarm. But it all right. It reminds me of me beer, which I like better. But same beer, more or less. Same beer? Same beer? Same show. <laughs>